today's video, I thought I'd show off some of my Canadian, or more specifically, uh, they're all Ontario uh, fluorite specimens. Now, uh, fluorite has been, uh, and still is, commercially mined. And, for example, in places like Madoc, or Madoc, where this specimen comes from, there were commercial mines in the area. And then later on, there were some smaller scale mining efforts uh, for uh, mineral sailors. Uh, but from what I read, the one source that I could find on what they were mining the fluorite for, or at least in one mine, they were mining the fluorite for lenses. Because interestingly enough, uh, fluorite, clear, it's, uh, when it's used industrially, it's called fluorospar. And clear fluorospar is used in camera lenses, uh, which is something I did not know. And then it's also used in other stuff for like, I think glass, uh, I, I think it's used to dye glass. And in some cases it's mined for the fluorine, but I think that's that was in the past and it's no longer um, a, a thing that they do now. But with that little information blurb out of the way, I will kind of show you all the cool fluorite specimens I have. To start off with, I have this lovely green uh, fluorite specimen from Madoc. It comes from the Rogers mine. Uh, it's on uh, white barite. You can see the kind of the barite blade clusters. And it's a lovely, it's got some lovely etching and just the, I love this specimen because it's got some great little etching and kind of stepping and stuff. And it's a, it's got a nice large uh, green crystal right in the middle that's undamaged. So it was a good specimen and from the price I paid for it, it was a great uh, price. Next we have another famous uh, fluorite or, or a specimen from another famous Ontario fluorite uh, occurrence. This it comes from the Highway 17 occurrence in Rossport, Ontario. Uh, this was a pretty uh, cool occurrence with some really dark purple fluorites though there were so also some nice clear pur purple fluorites there and this specimen also you can see it's kind of encrusted in nice kind of uh, quartz druze and it's a nice little example of kind of the dark purple fluorites from the highway 17 uh, road cut and it's definitely uh, uh, one that I find quite uh, appealing. Keeping in the theme of purple fluorites, I have some purple fluorites from the uh, Lincoln Quarry in Beamsville, Ontario. This is a quarry that you can go on uh, trips with uh, the local mineral collecting clubs. That's the only way you can access this. Uh, the last time I went there, uh, a, another fellow collector found a big uh, boulder of fluorites and he gifted me this smaller specimen from that boulder that he uh, collected from. And you can see it's a, they're nice crystal clear, light purple uh, fluorites. And then I personally found a couple uh, smaller ones and this was one of the larger smaller ones I found. This one's perched on top of a little sphellerite cluster. So I thought that was quite uh, a quite little appealing little um, thumbnail specimen. And it's, as you can see, a uh, lot clearer than the uh, Highway 17 specimen I have, and a, light, a lot lighter purple. Up next, we have the Montrose Occurrence. The Montrose Occurrence is known for having some uh, produced some very lovely fluorites, though nowadays it's quite sparse. Though I have this specimen that I purchased uh, last year for a very good price, and it's some very lovely light blue fluorites, though. On the camera, it seems to be picking up as more of the light purple, but in person, these are light blue. Now, with the Montrose occurrence fluorites, they're very sensitive to UV light, so the purple and the blues will tend to fade over time. So I have to be careful, and I keep this stored in a dark drawer and covered with another uh, specimen box. That way, the purples, the light blue, does not fade from the specimen because it's a very lovely light blue. And it'd be a shame to, to lose that color. But it's a lovely example. And I'll show you a couple more examples that I've collected from Montrose in the past. 
Here are two more Montrose specimens. Uh, I collected these a, a while ago already. Um, this one came out of a pocket of like really bashed up calcite and the crystal like literally just dropped out of the pocket. It's basically been faded. It was in the sun. So it lost any color if it had any, but it's a decent size for what you could find nowadays from Montrose. Like it's, the site used to be a lot bigger, but it's been developed where the Lowe's is. Um, it's, uh, that used to be all rock and apparently that area produced some really nice, large, uh, colorful blue and purple fluorites. And now that it's been developed, that material has been taken away and dumped elsewhere or ground up or something. This is a smaller cluster of fluorites and a bit of dolomitic limestone. It's a nice little example. But yeah, these two were self-collected by me a while back. Here is a recent self-collected specimen. It's another Niagara specimen from a rock pile in Niagara. You can see it's not as impressive as the, Montre uh, the other Montrose ones that I showed you. But um, it's still cool. It's... Beggars can't be choosers, so I was pretty happy with this find, and I'll actually link the video below, since it was a recent video. I'm sure you guys would enjoy seeing that video if you haven't already. Here we have a fluorite specimen that I added recently to my collection. It's a nice toffee brown fluorite from the Lafarge Embro Quarry. It's a great little specimen. It's a nice little cl uh, undamaged cluster of the toffee brown fluorites that you can you could find at the 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 farge embro quarry and it's just a lovely little thumbnail example of fluorite and a great great color which is why i got it in the first place last but definitely not least i have this nice yellow cube of fluorite from the dundas quarry uh, the dundas quarry you can't collect at anymore so these are getting rarer and rarer and this is this example has a uh, bitumen or hydrocarbons uh, on it, which is kind of interesting. I kind of like it. It gives it more character and kind of actually highlights some of like the uh, sk slight stepping and uh, skeletal formations this this fluorite has. It's a lovely little whole thumbnail specimen, and it'll make a great addition to my collection. Uh, but yeah, it is a great little example of a southern Ontario fluorite from the Dundas area. We have reached the end of this video. I want to thank you guys for uh, watching. If you like this type of stuff and you haven't already, please do like and subscribe. Leave in the comments below which, your, which was your favorite specimen. And I will see you guys in the next video.